Scorpio. See where her heel is? Super important. At the doggy park. She's been corrected once when she first got here, which is pretty normal. Pretty much always move in to her. <laughs> Unless she's really relaxed, then I'll put her on some outside turns. But anyway, pretty much every time we go somewhere new, she's got to have a decent correction initially. Heel. She's pushing me because there's two dogs up ahead playing. Um, and then, you know, she, she seems to keep it together and just be <laughs> nervous. So, I mean, I'd be nervous too. First, she's just nervous with dogs, and then now she's getting corrected for barking. And so there's, you know, going to be nervousness there too. And so it's important to continue to walk and move so your dog um, gets to work through all those emotions. Maybe get barked at again. Um, maybe they, it like, give also gives them a chance to make a mistake again. And you show them what you do want them to do. There's a dog right there. But pretty calm. Nope. So I let her look a little. When we're in a situation where she's surrounded, it's about five, um, I'll let some of her looks go. And what I'm looking for, what was I at? That was a 18. What I'm looking for is her really honing in on one dog and lingering more than just checking in, just glancing. Where's that dog at? What it's doing? If, uh, if that's all it is, I'll let most of them go. But if she actually keeps her eyes locked onto a dog, that's a no. Because that means she's feeding off or about to feed off. The intent is going to be to react. How do I know that? Because I know this dog. Look at her snuggling behind my, my leg. It's very good. And if I needed to, even though I don't have a ton of space super lucrative if I needed to well, I didn't need to but if I did I would just go let's go good and just that little step out that change in direction of their eye line is crazy useful but anyway I'm just gonna do this about four times and that's if nothing happens if something happens and I have to address it um, or even if she takes it in stride. When we first walked up, we got barked at. And she she did fine. She didn't react. But she held on to all that anxiety. So if something happens to us like that, I will have to do this several more times. Because I don't want to leave this spot until I see some real improvement in her state of mind. That's always the goal of these cuties. People with their easy dogs they just don't they don't know heel good so that was a linger and I know my levels are on the higher side but if they're not like a little tap on the shoulder but they're not huge either they're we, we would call them motivational levels like a low correction is what we would call that but it's so important just really drill this. Nope, let's go. Good. With uh, with your dog. So what was that? So that was a five, I think. Yeah. She's really hugging my leg because of that. Let's go. Changing your dog's eyesight line is crucial because it's the other dog's hyper focus and how they're staring that creates that pressure cooker. We're gonna go super slow. I just realized I, I picked up my speed when I did that little bubble out. I'm gonna let her look back a couple times, heel, and then I'll tap. Oh, painfully slow. She's gotta learn to trust me. It's so good though, really good, really nice job. See if she looks at this dog running. Those glances are okay. Nice. 
this. Now, if I was gonna give my dog any reassurance at all, it would be when we were pa completely past the rough moment. Sit. The dog is gone. I, get, I can get eye contact. Good. Good girl. Good job. Nice job. Now, you might do this to your dog heel, and it gets them excited. It makes, when you touch your dog, it might make their ears perk up right away, or it might make them start sniffing or start looking again. Watch for that. It'll tell you what your affection um, means to them in difficult moments. So many times we get dogs in with us or the, uh, always the owners, but sometimes with us too, no. We, we will touch them in some way. Like, oh, good job. Like even for just a recall. Good girl. I'm gonna slow down, good. Even for just a recall. And uh, they'll just turn away from us. Whereas before they weren't doing that. You have to really look at how your dog views affection from people, the association they have with people. And then they'll have a different relationship with trainers than owners. So any owners seeing that, try it. Just make sure you can tell when it does not work in your favor. Let's go. All right, so it's a little anxious, but you always want to give your dog a little bit of a breather. Walks for a lot of dogs are very stressful. Dogs that are dog reactive or nervous of humans. So your dog needs a breather. Good. Need to be on a long leash. She's usually on muzzle, but I don't know. I just I think she's fine. <laughs> but with owners, she'll be on muzzle for quite some time. Um, she's if she, this was a weekend, if this was a weekend day, she'd be on muzzle with me but she's not and everything is pretty spaced out. So not worried, but anyway, um, she needs to be, your dog needs a breather. This is how dogs learn organically. See that? Move when I move, stop when I stop. It is necessary for them to practice this. Hey, we got barking doves and I'm going to scroll up and I'm ready, especially cause I have no muzzle, but anyway, See how she does with this. Good. I can't talk right now. I gotta watch. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Good. Good. Nope. Let's go. Good. Nope, let's go. That's all verbal. That's what we were dealing with. And then the barking up here. Let's see what she's gonna do. I'm just gonna freeze my feet. I'm kind of surrounded. So I'm just gonna, just so you guys know, the reason I said those NOs and I didn't tap the button is because I was waiting for a really bad decision. That way I could be ready because I'm holding my phone. Now I can scroll down though. Hey, let's go. Good, let's go. Good. So that was at 30, just to kind of give you an idea. So when stuff like that comes up and I don't have a close hold of the leash, um, yeah, I gotta be ready. So that's, that's what I was doing. And that's what you gotta do too. If you're set too high, you know, for an emergency, just do some verbals and body language, draw your dog into you. But anyway, your dog needs a break. Heel is very restrictive. Heel and no, heel and no. Break, go on. So you need some organic, we're gonna call it some of the new, the new trainer term, which I actually kind of like for this type of training is holistic because they don't, a lot of trainers don't like balanced anymore. So. This is holistic dog training. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think it's actually a pretty good term because it's very true to the nature of the dog, which is not on leash. I mean, I know they're dragging a leash, but it's just move when I move, stop when I stop, and then don't follow me, which I could do.
me backing away from her is telling her not to follow me. And I didn't even tell her D-O-W-N if I'm gonna get really hardcore into this holistic approach. But dogs still gotta learn obedience. Nope. So I moved in, said no. I tapped, I was only at like five. And that's because she heard them talking up there. So every time she tries to come to me, it's from insecurity. Let's see if I can get it a D-O-W down at a distance. Down. No, down. I'm moving in because she's sneaking to me. There we go. Oh, my camera's weird. Let me fix it. I have all these new settings. Okay, that's normal. Uh-oh. Running dogs. She noticed them. Oh, they're headed this way. So I'm gonna go to my high again and I'm gonna do all verbal unless I need my high. Let's go. Good, I'm gonna get her moving. I don't want her in a down watching that dog just approach her loading. Unless I wanted to really challenge her. Let's go, good. But honestly, I think this is challenge enough. I wanna end on a more relaxed, positive note. Let's go. Don't you worry about the kid. That was just a verbal. And it's because the kid yelled. She wanted to just keep her eye on it. It, it, sorry, him. There we go. Look, she's trying to figure out what to do. Good girl. We got fairly close. Fairly close. Not too shabby, chick. Freeze. Talking. There's a ball. Come. Yes, come. Good girl. Sit. Good. Come should always be anchored into a sit break. And I would have gotten further, but I could tell she sensed me moving back. Again, a great choice. Let's go. So basically, we just walk until she seems to be interested or distracted by something. Then I creep away and recall her. So it's a real world recall. She likes the spot. Be very stealthy. I'm gonna set her up. I'm gonna, I'm out of 50, so you guys know. Luna, come. Good girl, come. Good, sit. I did have to tap. Break. I didn't, I didn't say N-O, but I did tap. Let's go, chick. Break. Give me spot. You don't care. We have dogs. Come on, H-I. Hi. Let's go. I'm going to put her back in let's go work. Oh, great. They're coming right at us. Okay, we'll keep walking. Let's move. Let's move. Good girl. I'm gonna kind of fan out a bit. Now I do wish I'd put your muzzle on you. They would stay away. Let's go, no, come on, let's go. Good. Gosh, they're not even giving space after that. With me, come on, hey, hey, let's go. Good, woo hoo hoo, that was hard. They didn't even give space when they saw that. Come on, people. All right, break, see, that's why. Wear muzzles for safety. But, okay, so let me unpack that. I just went ahead and tapped when I kind of moved and she seemed conflicted about moving with me. Why is that? Because of intent. It's so important for you guys to understand. If the intent is to chase the squirrel or if they're in motion, if the intent is to be aggressive towards something, you don't mess around, you don't say, come, give them a chance, no, then tap, then come and repeat. No, 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 it's not training anymore, it's behavioral. Don't even look at a dog thinking that. That is why it's different. That's why, come, yay, good girl, sit. I'm scrolling down, no, sit. Good. Let's go. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. You want to know what it's like working a reactive dog in public. It is not easy. It's why you 
a home, do this in your yard. If you don't have a yard, get creative. Let's go about calmer times during the day to take your dog to certain parks where you live. So you've got plenty of space for your dog to breathe. See, I got, there's another dog up there, but I got so much space to work off of that it can be a positive experience for her before we go home, which is important.